Good evening and welcome to the report. I'm Jonathan Steele. Nouri al-Maliki has described the effort to replace him as Iraq's prime minister with US-endorsed Haider al-Abadi as having no value. He has filed an objection with the federal court against al-Abadi's appointment, and he says his government will continue until a final decision has been made. Nathaniel Amos Sansam has more on this story. The government of Iraq remains in gridlock, as a constitutional battle rages between the fractured nation's president and caretaker prime minister. Appearing on state TV earlier today, embattled prime minister Nouri al-Maliki said that as the preferred candidate of the largest grouping in the parliament, he still holds the legal right to form a coalition, and that the appointment by the country's Kurdish president, Farad Massoum, of the compromise candidate Hadiya al-Abadi has no legal value unless ruled so by the country's federal court. I would like to confirm that we will proceed in this government. It continues and will not be stopped, and will not be changed except after the federal court issues its decision. So everybody should be committed to the legal and constitutional procedures. The occupation of large sections of northern Iraq by ISIS forces has pushed the long-running sectarian tensions in the country to the surface. Maliki, leader of the largest Shiite faction in the parliament, is seen by many as too much of a polarizing figure to fix tensions with the alienated Sunni community, which has recently begun to throw its support behind ISIS. To his supporters, however, that goes against Maliki's constitutional right as the leading candidate to seek a mandate to govern. It is our right and we want it. We have elected him for a third term. He won most of the seats of parliament and this rally is a declaration of our support for a third term for him. However, Maliki has lost the backing of two of his key global allies, with Iranian government sources giving their endorsement to the PM designate and the American Secretary of State calling on a new Iraqi government to govern inclusively. The new Iraqi leadership has a very difficult challenge. Uh, it has to regain the confidence of its citizens by governing inclusively, but also by taking steps to demonstrate their resolve. And we're going to continue to stand with the Iraqi people during this time of transition. Once the final form of Iraq's next government is decided, the immediate challenge it will face will be to defeat ISIS and to alleviate the growing humanitarian crisis on Mount Sinjar among persecuted minority Christian and ethnic Yazidis groups. But in the longer term, its challenge is to show that the Iraqi government is still the main authority in a state that has been falling apart in recent months. Nathaniel Lemus Sansom, Islam Channel. Well, I'm joined now in the studio by Dr. Rebwa Fata, who is director of the Middle East Consultancy Services, and Ayman Abu Zaid, who is a Middle East political commentator. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Let me start with you, um, Ayman. Do you think that Maliki can really realistically hold on to power at this stage? Uh, no, I don't think so, because um, uh, those who initiated his uh, presence in the um, in the Iraqi government are the very ones that will have decided to take him uh, take him out, and they've obviously, as we've just heard, they've endorsed the uh, the new leader, um, and um, you know whether he will continue to fight or not, I don't see he stands a, a chance at all. And what do you think, uh, Doctor? Uh, I knew they meant. Uh, I think. I think he is fighting a lost ground. I don't think he lost all the credibility. I don't think Maliki has any chance of staying in power because he lost the um, Iranian and American and his own group's endorsement. So I don't think. He will but isn't he worried that he might be prosecuted or charged with some sort of criminal offence? <laughs> Uh, 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 it will be difficult to speculate on that. Maybe he makes it difficult for himself. Maybe he try to scatter him because he built a, a very strong security service for himself. Maybe he try to make it things difficult for the coming uh, prime minister. But I think that's just really. Um, I, I think I, that that would be foolish. And, and what about the army? I mean, he says the army must continue to back him, doesn't he? I mean, could there be a split now with the army going with Maliki and? politicians going with Abadi? It could potentially be, be, be a split, but if things go in, uh, uh, very strongly go in a certain direction, such as um, more pressure on him to leave, then perhaps um, the army may just um, surrender to what the, reality, the new reality is. Now, obviously, whether he will be prosecuted or not, that depends on what's been uh, arranged under the table and what uh, assurances uh, he was given to, uh, to leave. I'm sure the Americans didn't go and say to him, you need to leave, and just left it at that. They obviously gave him assurances. Um, and assurances 
preferences uh, as they've given to other parts of the Middle East, such as in Egypt with Sisi example, as an example. So uh, it does depend on, yeah. I mean, the key question, of course, is whether the change of prime minister brings the Sunnis back into government and therefore undermines the support that many Sunnis are giving to ISIS. Do you think that uh, Abadi, I mean, he obviously is still Shia, he is still part of the Dawah party, the same party as Maliki, won't he be tainted in a sense by Maliki's own policies in the past? I, I don't. I don't think there will be much. Uh, there will be much difference in in, in the sort of the, the strategic um, approach to governing the uh, the, the Iraqi nation. Um, it's just you've got one person that has always been an ally, ally to America that has failed in achieving the goals of the, the regional goals and the international goals that America had um, had demanded. Um, it's time to change him and get someone more clever that would uh, align uh, the policy or align the situation in Iraq with what uh, the Americans want. Let's not forget that America is the one that initiated all this this this, uh, this mess we have um, uh, have in Iraq. So it obviously wants to cover itself and cover the mess by getting someone uh, come in straight away, organize the, the, the table, put things right, and uh, bring some sort of, even if it's fake looking stability to Iraq, but at least America looks good because that's all that they're concerned about. And Dr. Rebwa, do you think that the, the Sunnis will now accept Abadi and uh, give him support and will get back to a kind of inclusive Baghdad government? I think that will be a difficult battle. I think we have a long way to, to, before that. I believe if you're going to uh, uh, govern in Baghdad the way we used to before, I, I think it won't be successful. I believe the local democracy has to be strengthened. For example, I mean, um, it, it, it may be sensitive to say, you know, Shia, Kurds, and Sunni, but you can have like a local government. There are 18 governors in Iraq. Maybe you have a, some sort of uh, local authority controlling most of the things, like in each governorate. But uh, if you, because uh, I mean, why why shouldn't the Sunnis or Kurds take part in a government that they all they know they always lose? Because Shia in Iraq, the population are 60 percent. Whatever you do, they're going to win. I mean, <laughs> it's not a surprise to anybody. And it, uh, I think it will be very. There is no, I think we discussed this last time, there is no one national political party in Iraq. It's all divided along different, uh, uh, along ethno-religious groups. And uh, uh, what's, what's the solution? I don't think Sunni will take part in a government that is going to be always Shia dominated. You really have to change the, gov the way the government run in Iraq in order for other communists to take part in the government. You've got to change the way the government's run, but surely the hope is that if Sunnis come in, they will put pressure on Abadi and say, look, we must have a, a non-sectarian government that doesn't favour and privilege only Shia. Yeah, I mean, um, well, you're saying that's impossible to, um, to I mean, expect? that's impossible because Sunnis is now controlled by Islamic State. Most of the Sunni areas are controlled by Islamic State. How are you going to get politicians from under the control of Islamic State? I'm talking about practicality of achieving that. Unless you achieve peace, integrate the country, as one, how could you achieve a government? Okay, a government in Baghdad, a big deal, so what? How, how are they going to uh, govern Mosul, which is controlled by ISIS, and it's called Islamic State? It has the flag and uh, everything. Well, obviously, that brings us on to the whole issue of the, what's going on in the Kurdish regions exactly. in the north. I mean, um, do you think that what the U.S. is doing there in terms of a certain amount of military strikes against ISIS is, uh, is the right approach? Um, it has. It can. I mean, first of all, it, it, there's a human, humanitarian crisis in Iraq and has to be solved. Uh, and and m military action well, might 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 achieve limited uh, uh, achievement. It doesn't really achieve everything. It will be very limited because don't forget, ISIS is somehow blended into the uh, into the region or that region. They are in the Mosul. There's about one and a half million people living in Mosul. You're not going to bomb Mosul because you want to get rid of ISIS. It's, it's a really, it's, it's a very, very difficult task, and it needs years to, to be solved. Uh, to be solved. Well, what do you feel, um, I mean, do you think that um, bringing in U.S. military force, which is happening, at least air power, is going to make more people turn towards ISIS in opposition to the U.S., or will, will the U.S. get what it wants? 
I, I think the way things are happening at the moment, people start to un, um, to see the the unfold of how um, America and Western countries want to um, want to you know to see uh, the way things unfold in Iraq. I mean, very clearly, we say inclusiveness. We want you know a country brought together, a country holding together. I mean, the the, the administrations can use the terminologies they want, but what inclusiveness are we going to have when you've got um, extended support and military? support by the West and today announced by France to support the Kurdish and obviously the Israelis under the table are supporting the Kurds as well um, in order to isolate from the, 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 the Iraqi picture and have a state of their own. You've got the, uh, the, the, the Shiites supporting in their way. You've got the Sunnis who and I'm talking about the, I'm not talking about the ISIS which is an, an, a, a creation um, of, uh, you know, of a round table. It's not something that was the, you know, that, that was there um, you know, long ago, and it's an old Saudi game as well that uh, they use as well. But in any case, the way things are happening at the moment and the different separating of the different segments of, if I can call it segments, of the Iraqi population, it does not show that there could be, um, you know, a, a fast solution. As, as, as our friend have just said, you know, if you have a, a government or you have whatever, let's not talk about definitions, but talk about the reality on the ground and the reality in the world of the politics in Iraq, what's happening. But what about the humanitarian issue? Do you, do you, can you separate that from the politics? Is it possible for the U.S. just to limit its airstrikes to this area around Mount Sinjar to protect people who are trapped on the mountain? Uh, no, I, I, think the, I think the humanitarian crisis is part of the political issue. I mean, without, without the political vacuum, there would not have been a humanitarian crisis. If the Iraqi state uh, was strong enough to control or to bring everybody I I into the, the negotiation table, into the government, or incorporate them, then they, we wouldn't have this crisis because of the security vacuum. That's what ISIS could, could control those areas, because we like to or not. Um, of course, the Sunnis are not supporting, not all the Sunnis supporting ISIS, but when they came in, the enemy of my enemy is my friend, I mean, they supported ISIS, and even the local insurgent groups also support ISIS, because they tried to get rid of the uh, Shia majority government, which they, which they wanted since... The, yeah, but let's just stick with the Kurds for the minute. Yeah. I mean, were you surprised that the Peshmerga, the Kurdish militias, Collapsed uh, in I was, uh, Yes, I was surprised actually. I think that came to everybody's surprise. They were tough and strong and battle yeah. hardened and so on. And they just ran away just yes. like the Iraqi army. And, and that raised many questions whether, whether this was like a tactic or whether it was a, a, a regional agreement. I don't really know. I have no information. But uh, of course, it was because they didn't fight at all. It came to everybody's surprise to withdraw from those cities and go back to you know uh, the borders of uh, 2003. And uh, oh, well, they are not there, but I mean close to that. I can, I mean, I mean, you can, we can talk about conspiracy theory, but I don't really know. But I was, I was, I was a surprise to everybody because I'm sure Peshmerga could have fought. Uh, I mean, we've been getting some tweets. I mean, we, there's one from John Williams, says that U.S. officials, unidentified, U.S. officials say some sort of ground force necessary to secure safe passage of, of Yazidis off Mount Sinjar. Do you think that the U.S. Will actually send ground forces to do that? No, no. I think I think um, America just wants to show the world that it's doing something about what's happening on the ground and the presence of uh, of ISIS. Why? Because it always likes to demonstrate itself or to present itself as uh, resolving regional issues in uh, in the Middle East. You know, uh, in in the way it finds its um, interest and not its not not the principles but the interests. Um, I mean, just just what I was saying earlier. On, the surprise about obviously the weapons being left behind and, and you know in the different parts of Iraq. I think that's a very very uh, planned, well planned tactical game by uh, by America um, and uh, with with Iranian involvement in that as well. I feel that this is to cause some sort of propaganda on the image of ISIS to to show an, a negative image of Sunnis and a negative image especially of uh, of Sunni Islamic politics as well or. or uh, um, you know, um, uh, is, uh, Islamist politics, if you like, as, as other parts in the Middle East. And it's just to show that it can never be the case. And to put them all into one, uh, into one uh, uh, net by calling the uh, ISIS, like the Muslim Brotherhood, like other parts of the Middle East, calling them all political Islam and just showing an image that 
this can never be uh, something that can be embedded into any political system in the Middle East. I think it's a it's a bigger propaganda game, but it's it's well, it's, it's, it's very, not very clear. Very dangerous game mm. because it's playing back into the face of the. U.S. and well, their the, allies the, in Iraq. I mean, there are many things. There are many things that are f uh, thrown back in the face of uh, in the face of America because they continually insist on dealing with matters in the wrong way. We've seen it in Vietnam. We've seen it in Iraq before. We've seen in uh, Afghanistan. Not only does it backlash on the people on on America, and I have sympathy for the American people more than the politicians. I have sympathy for Americans who can't get their rights, but their billions of pounds going to the Israelis. But at the end of the day, it's backlash on the, the, the stabilities in the countries that the, 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 American, the American forces are going into as well. So unfortunately, that's a consequence they don't tend to put, in, uh, put into account, or they're willing to take the risk, uh, providing they demolish a country such as the Iraqi country, because it had a very, very powerful military, which America and Israel in the region doesn't want. Well, I think we've run out of time on that. We're going to go now to our first break of the evening. But do join us after that when we'll be discussing HSBC's recent spate shutting down bank accounts belonging to Muslim individuals. More on that after the break, so join us then.